Yes, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Leitner? Here. Commissioner Walls? Here. Commissioner Rice? Right. Oh. Here. Commissioner Duckham? Commissioner Alexander? Present. Commissioner Mahoney? Here. <laughs> Good morning. Commissioner Palachek? Here. Commissioner Elwell? Here. David, or Commissioner Shotwell? Here. Chairman Shotwell, excuse me. Actually, what I'd like to do, if I may, I'd like to flip-flop six and four. I know Karen has a, a, a speaker, and uh, I'd like to move her along so she can uh, get on with her business. If there's no objections, we're going to flip-flop six and four. Karen, would you please come to the podium and explain your tax foreclosure? Yes, good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you for allowing us to go first on the agenda. Um, you have um, the packet that I sent out regarding uh, the request from the county treasurer as well as the chair of the land bank authority to acquire four tax foreclosed properties from the tax foreclosure cycle this year. Um, the, this is not a new process. We have, uh, we as in the land bank have requested to acquire tax foreclosed properties through the county's first right of refusal in the past. Uh, in the packet, I included two previous resolutions to indicate when we did that, uh, 2007, and most recently in 2014. Um, so I think we've got enough explanation as to what we're trying to accomplish. Um, again, the land bank is interested in trying to uh, improve the communities that we acquire houses in. Uh, we've included what our intent is for these four properties. Uh, there are two properties in Blackman Township, uh, one on Lark, one on Cardinal Crest. Those are both in the same neighborhood. I believe they're less than a block from each other. Uh, so the Land Bank Board felt that it was um, a targeted area that we could make a difference. Uh, so, and I think you've got pictures to include it in your packet that shows you the, just the exterior of the houses. Uh, now, mind you, the pictures can be deceiving. Um, one of the houses, I believe, on Lark looks really good uh, from the outside, but the interior is all gutted. So uh, the land bank is well aware of what needs to be done for these houses, um, and we are willing to do the work to rehab them, to turn around and sell them through the real estate market with the intent to get them back on the tax rolls. Uh, we have one property in Leone Township that we're looking or to acquire. Uh, it is in the Durrell Trailer Park. Uh, it's on Bell Rose. Our intent would be to remove the blighted, uh, dilapidated trailer and green space that area. Um, that continues with our mission that we have been working with for the past seven, eight years. Uh, with Leone Township, this would be the eighth property that we look to acquire in green space in that um, targeted area in that township. And then lastly, we have a house in Summit Township on Foy, um, and that is that we wish to acquire that, make the improvements on the inside interior of the, the house and look to, to sell that and remove it or put it back onto the tax rolls. You can see that the dollar amounts there are uh, listed when the land bank uh, inquires to um, acquire tax foreclose, foreclosed properties, we pay the taxes. So those uh, units will be made whole with regard to those four properties. Um, and I do have Pete Jansek from Blackman Township is here today. Um, and he also serves on the land bank board, uh, but he may uh, wish to talk to you about the properties in Blackman Township. We're excited um, on the part of the land bank to partner with the new township. We haven't partnered with Blackman Township in the past, so um, we've had discussions as the land bank board and feel that this would be the right uh, move for us to make, but um, Pete does have some background information on those two properties and he's here to answer any questions that you may have and I can answer any questions that you may have. Good morning. 
the uh, actually it's the property on Cardinal Crest that uh, ah. is uh, gutted inside. The one on Lark uh, needs more cosmetic and some uh, maintenance issues. Uh, the as uh, was stated by uh, Karen, the goal of the land bank is to help stabilize and improve neighborhoods and I think both of these properties uh, fit into that uh, goal and mission uh, one of the things that uh, by the land bank uh, rehabbing these properties it uh, raises them to a point where a stable family would get in there long-term occupancy protects the neighborhood as opposed to it becoming uh, possibly a rental uh, uh, property which you know at times that can be good and at times it can be bad but uh, to me the uh, uh, biggest thing is the fact that it gets rehabbed to the point where a, a long-term family would want to uh, live there and be a part of the neighborhood the property on cardinal crest uh, the gentleman that started the uh, renovation on that that's why it's uh, gutted inside and, and has some it's had some anderson windows put in he passed away uh, and then unfortunately his son passed away within a year after him passing away so that's why that property is sat and went through court and different things so it, that's how it ended up on the uh, uh, on the roll uh, so I would just like to uh, uh, recommend that uh, the board of commissioners consider uh, partnering with the land bank to acquire these properties thank you any questions hey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a couple of questions about it this morning, and I talked with Pete ahead of time, and I appreciate the work of Karen's office and the explanation from Pete on it, uh, especially when I looked at the uh, Lark Street property. It looks like it's a fairly decent looking on the outside, but I agree with the analysis of both of you uh, about what the intent is. Karen, there's no concern about these ones. I, I mean, I see the one is 6,700 and the other is 6,500. Uh, there was a federal program we participated in before where we were taking federal dollars and putting them into properties and then ended up selling the properties for a lot less than we had into them. That's not a concern with these, though, I would assume, correct? That is correct. You'll make the improvements, and it'll still be marketable at a fair value, and we're not going to lose money on it. That's correct? the goal, okay. yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I'll just make <laughs> if I just make a note too that uh, this is not the foreclosure resolution that the board will see. You will see one at our Tuesday night meeting as well <coughs> for the county. Uh, and I know we had sent the maps out, and uh, um, at least one of you sent in a couple properties that we were interested. Uh, and just uh, we looked at those properties FYI and the city has already taken those properties um, so those will not be as of right now I have no properties in mind so again take a look at the maps if you see something that you think may strike your fancy or have you know a need for the county by all means bring it to my attention Mike I had sent that email I think to all the commissioners and you about several down by the fairgrounds and there was I think two of them on the current list one was a vacant lot that backs up to an alley by the medical care facility, but it's on Blackstone. And then the second was on Blackstone, I think. Uh, and there was conversation about, uh, well, I think good intent on our part of trying to acquire properties that should happen to come up that are down by the fairgrounds. Are we in line to receive any of those properties after the city's done with them or not? That's still the intent, yes. And the city has not said uh, otherwise, so. Our, my expectation is that, that we will ultimately end up with those properties. Okay, because I will say that I actually drove down there and looked at them, and there are at least two parcels, I think, that were on the previous list that had houses knocked down that are now clear lots that back up to our lot that's on the west side of Blackstone that I think would be advantageous for us to have, and I hope we have follow-through with that. Thank actually, you. we're in the, the process of uh, rectifying that as well as a couple other properties. We have two parcels actually on the fairgrounds that we're trying to click clean up as well well not to belabor the point but the one that's on Blackstone south of Ganson on the west side I think it's the second or third lot south of Ganson is a clear lot and again it backs up to the alley where we've had questions or issues and it 
backs up to the parking lot for the medical care facility, and I, especially with no house being on the property, would be advantageous for us to have, I think. So, thank you. Thank you. But again, if anyone has any additional properties, let us know. Um, hopefully by the end of the week, take another look at the map, and because uh, we need to prepare for that and put it forward. We have the resolution currently. It says zero. You know, it says no, there are no properties we're wishing to take, but if something pops up, not to hog the mic, but Mike, can we get a list of the properties that have been taken? I mean, we have the list with the maps that are highlighted. Uh, it'd be helpful, I guess, to know which one the municipalities have taken already. Would it be difficult to get a list like that? Or, or if even there's a separate list on what other municipalities have claimed, then we can just look at it. We talked about that in our meeting, Mike, uh, with Patrick Birch, um, and they could probably produce a map that shows the surrounding properties in that target area and who owns which parcels so we can I can talk with Patrick about getting something well yeah we're talking about the current list and is the list that properties have been taken and it would go across the whole county I assume there's townships out there as yes. well uh, who may well, have assumed some property yeah, but like the city they're I'm assuming they, they do a resolution that says we want these properties even yes. if we can just get yeah. those because we can just compare that to the list we, we have is fine at the last meeting they took 25 parcels and they are going to, the city of Jackson is going to be doing another round just before July 1st. Just before then, the deadline. Just before the deadline. <laughs> They're breaking it in two. <laughs> then we, we won't be looking at this at our next meeting then, will we? Well, no, we need to do this. If we were going to take a property, you need to do it before July 1st. That's correct. Which, that's that's the deadline that we have. That puts us in a bind if, because, you know. Well, so they're me, first uh, before we are. We correct. could be after the same property is what it comes down to. July 1st. Their deadline is July 1st. I can speak to Patrick, though, just, you know, outside of, you know. I, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Delaney. Yeah, we, we have the same deadline. So if, if we're going to act at our Tuesday meeting, we'd be acting before the city's chances passed, correct? I mean, that is. Yes, I can tell you that the city is looking at taking more houses again from this batch of tax foreclosed properties the last city council meeting they took 25 they're waiting for my office to um, evict the tenants and the other batch of properties that they're looking to acquire that's one of the guidelines for the hardest hit program that they have to make sure that those properties that they acquire are vacated so that's why we're kind of this is this year's a little bit different but we're working and partnering with the city to get those properties um, vacated so that they can take them if I may chime in, way well, yeah, I understand it, and Karen, you can correct me if I'm incorrect on this, but is the deadline is the same for everyone. Yes. It's just they have priority. State is first, then it's the township, city, and villages, and then the county. So if we were all three competing for one, spa one space, the state would win. If the state's not there, it'd be one of the other municipalities over the county. That doesn't mean we won't shouldn't declare that we want that property. It's just they have a chance to take it before July 1st, it, you know. So e even That's if correct. we at our Tuesday night meeting decide we want a property, they can come in before July 1st, act and say we want it first. That is correct, yes. And if I may, um, with regard to the two properties that you were talking about, Commissioner Alwell, um, if the city is willing to take down a blighted structure ut utilizing those dollars that they have, we're in communication with the city about these land swaps and land assembly, so we have some concerted strategic plan with regard to that let the city take down the blighted properties then we have a vacant clear lot then at that point we can continue the conversations with the city and say we're interested in this property that is in the fairground by the fairground as an example so the conversations have started they will continue to be ongoing so that's just food for thought as well yeah I'm good with that uh, and in this case there's at least two of those that are vacant right now yes uh, or three they yeah, took the structures actually. down last year. Right. Mm-hmm. Does that help clarify? Hi, Karen. Yes. I'm a little more concerned about the uh, evictions that need to take place. Are there a lot of these homes that people are living in? Every cycle, we go through the eviction process. So this isn't a new process. When, when, when I foreclose on the property is March 31st, usually within the first three weeks of April, I'm making contact with houses or structures that may have occupants in them. At that time, I serve a notice 
on the tenants or occupants, former owners, whoever is in the house, giving them a 30-day termination of tenancy. Then we start the process of, you know, they've got the 30-day notice. They can go ahead and look for other options. The property has been foreclosed on. Um, right now, we're in the process of going through the court process of the eviction. So last week, I spent two or three days at the courthouse going through the eviction hearings. We have eviction hearings Thursday and again some next week. So that's not a new process. I've always done the evictions. In my mind, it makes the property more marketable if there's not per a person living in the house. Yes. So clarification, what I, I heard you just say the city demolished the homes last year. Right? I, I believe at the end of the year they did, utilizing those funds. But they don't belong to the city. They didn't belong to the city then, correct? I'd have to double check. I want to make okay. sure that okay. I don't misspeak. But they, the city has been taking down the blighted structures. Now, what has happened last year is they acquired the properties before they took them down. In the past, that wasn't always the case. Any other questions? Yes, Commissioner Rice. Hey, Karen, I, I just wanted to know, uh, uh, this kind of goes with what John was talking about. <coughs> I, uh, Karen and I have been talking about this. Uh, actually, when people get evicted, there really is no process or, or financial means to actually even help them get housing. Uh, apparently, there are some communities that there's money to, to help people to find some place else to live. But in this case... Uh, Hypothetically, if somebody's out the door in 30 days and they haven't found a place to live, uh, I guess we have no idea where they end up. That is correct, Com Commissioner Rice. We talked about post-foreclosure options, and I wish that Jackson County had more resources or options uh, with the post-foreclosure. Um, each year when we do the evictions, we do deal with people who are displaced, and it's not a pleasant Task. Uh, I know for Washtenaw County, they do have a very strong pre-foreclosure uh, prevention as well as post-foreclosure programs, but um, maybe someday we'll get there. But Karen, it's my understanding in Washtenaw County that's for owners of the property, not for renters. In Washtenaw County, they, the, the landlords are still held to a, to a much higher standard there than here in Jackson, first off. And, Second, Washtenaw is working to save people who are the owners of the property. Not If, okay. if I was living in my house, they would come and assist me, mm -hmm. whereas, whereas if I was the landlord, they're, not, they're a little bit disinterested in, in assisting with the landlord, but they want to make sure the tenant has some place to go. Am I correct on that? I, I did not know that they differentiated between homeowners and, and tenants. You know, I, from my perspective, the tenants really are in a difficult situation because half the time, more than half the time, they're not even aware that the landlord didn't pay the taxes. So I come knocking on the door and I tell them that the house has been foreclosed. So, you know, we try to, to give time. We try to give proper notice so that they have time to move out. But sometimes that's not always a good landing spot for the tenants that are involved. Any other questions? Thank you for the interest. Thanks, Karen. You're welcome. Next up, Cascades Phase 2 update. I believe Steve is going to handle this. I wanted to make commissioners aware that we have received a uh, Weatherwax Challenge grant and are putting that money together. And at this time, the Parks Director is working on a modified uh, proposal which will probably have an unveiling sometime this summer uh, for a, a renovated or really a new site pump house and uh, moving forward with phase two uh, we want to recognize the Weatherwax Foundation, MH, MN's Garbage Service and uh, uh, Mackey for the assistance on this uh, property and program, and we look forward to uh, other refuge companies taking uh, taking the example of Emmons and uh, making a donation also in the future with a challenge. We hope. Uh, on that, I just wanted to make everyone aware that we are moving forward with it. It's not something that's come to an end. I know you did hear that we did uh, decide not to have a uh, fundraising luncheon, but that decision was made based on uh, participation more than anything else. Uh, 
So it's uh, it's on its way forward, and it looks like uh, hopefully sometime this fall we'll see groundbreaking on that pump house and uh, the ribbon cutting for that. That concludes my update. Unless someone has found $8 million that they'd like to give to the Cascades, uh, we'd be more than happy then to do all the renovation at once. I do want to thank our facilities department and the administrator controller for finding the emergency funds to repair the cement work so that we could be open on time this year. <coughs> okay, continuing on with the agenda, assuming no one has any additional questions for the chairman. Um, we're back to the SRI resolution. Sadly, it is uh, what the, the third time we've had to do this. You recall the first was this time last year. Uh, Leone and uh, uh, still has not paid the. I personally do not believe they're really any closer to resolution. Having now met with the judge. Uh, I know they're still having conversations, but you know we've been having conversations for the last couple of years at least on this issue. Um, I've asked our attorney, <clears throat> just FYI, to move it forward. I, whatever you can do, move it forward. Uh, the judge uh, needs to make a decision uh, from our perspective. Somebody needs to move it forward because this, this board here, this body, has voted decided what the what you believe is the correct course and uh, now we've uh, petitioned the court to move it forward and thus far it hasn't so uh, with that in mind though we still have a July 1st bond payment to make and you'll notice in the resolution we also included in there as was suggested the the prior bonds that have not been or bond payments that have not been paid with this payment here, uh, Leone would owe the county $692,646.34, and that doesn't include the penalty portion. The penalty portion would be added on whatever the total ultimately is. Uh, but still, we're pushing 700000 after this, this payment uh, of July 1st. So we're looking for um, a motion per the per this staff report. Looking for a motion to, uh, don't you need the resolution to pass now? It doesn't, it doesn't have to pass now as long as we do it before July 1st. I like it now because that gives them 10 days notice before the due date, so yes. So I entertain a motion to approve resolution 06-16.12 to issue notice to the township Township default under the under the Jackson County Wastewater Disposal Facility Southern Regional Interceptor Section Bond Contract and Act 185, a public act 19, uh, for 1957. So moved. We have a motion in support. Any questions to the resolution or the motion? Commissioner Alwell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, really, for the administrator, again, I renew my prior comments uh, about the thought of seeking a legal opinion on our ability to declare that the Southern Interceptor is ours. Leone's not making the payments. What would it take to do that? I can tell you that uh, I've had those conversations with our attorney. His response is the same uh, now as it was then, and that is not a remedy that is spelled out in the contract that we signed. Uh, we, there's remedies for them not paying, and that's what we're pursuing. What he's basically saying is legally we don't have a, a remedy beyond that. I, I guess personally I'd like to see that in writing on what our options are. It may not be in the bond contract, uh, but it doesn't seem much dissimilar to somebody that doesn't make the payments on their house, on their property. If they quit making the payments, they don't own the house. And I, I'd, I'd like something more formal than just conversations, to be honest with you. Well, we can we we can ask him to write that up. It's you know I can say the that, only difference it's is it's just me saying money. that. I'm not sure how the rest of the board feels, but I Dave, I feel strongly about it. Yes. Would you be comfortable voting on the resolution here and then entertaining Ab a motion absolutely. to that effect? Absolutely. I, I'm not saying stop this mm -hmm. resolution here, so that's fine. Okay. Any further comments?
Resolutions passed unanimously. Commissioner Elwell. I guess I'd make a motion to direct that the administrator seek a legal opinion from our attorney on the potential of our uh, ability to declare that the southern interceptor is ours by default of the person that's supposed to be making or the entity supposed to be making the payments on it and seek a legal opinion from them, not just under the bond contract, but under law. So it's my understanding that you are asking for a legal opinion to determine whether the county may uh, assume ownership of the SRI and sell it to another entity if it's interested in buying, correct? You're spot on. ownership of the other pipe. Sorry. Plot check. Motion made by Elwell, supported by Plot check. Commissioner questions. Commissioner Duckham. As uh, Administrator Overton said, this isn't listed as one of the options in the SRI contract. I agree with that. However, the board passed a resolution uh, a few months back that was in the contract and the judge didn't accept doesn't appear to be accepting that either so I don't know if it's in the contract if it makes a great deal of difference or not as long as is it's a resolution legally passed by the board it's my thoughts and Commissioner Rice thank you Mr. Chairman um, I mentioned this before I again from my perspective this is in the judicial system and uh, for us as a, a legislative uh, uh, part of government at the county level for us to think that we should be able to just step in and potentially uh, remove this from uh, from its current uh, um, from its current be currently being bonded uh, uh, by the LA township uh, and as the re and as the uh, recommendation uh, from the administrator states, uh, as we all know, we've been over this a million times. I can't wait till it's over. But um, you know, it states right in there: you have three townships are supposed to pay Leone, and then Leone is responsible to pay the county. So, in some respects, we could say that the three townships um, uh, signed off to uh, to pay Leone and didn't do it. And we can say that Leone is responsible to pay us, even though they didn't get paid by the three townships. So in respect, uh, you know, to me, we've, we, we've got uh, uh, quite an issue there. My understanding is uh, negotiations are completely broken off. Uh, Columbia has no desire to play, and it's, it's, it's going to be back in the judge's hands. Maybe Mike can add to that. But I would hope that the judge would make a final decision here. Um, uh, that uh, I, I would hope that he would order some type of action because uh, obviously uh, at this level uh, with this being put in the hands of us county commissioners I I just have some real concerns about uh, uh, why some of these actions are being taken and uh, so I'm certainly not going to support this I suspect I'll be in the minority but uh, it won't be the first time thank you Commissioner Elwell Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I specifically didn't mention a township by name on who hasn't paid. I think we addressed that in the prior resolution demanding that they pay. But regardless of that and regardless of who isn't paying, we're not being paid for it. And it's just to say, okay, we have made a huge investment of county taxpayer dollars and agreed to back the funding of this, and whoever is supposed to be paying for it isn't. And until it's paid for, I think it's pretty clear that it's ours and it becomes somebody else's once it's paid for. And it'd be no different than if the county had a piece of property and it wasn't being paid for, we'd probably have Karen, our treasurer, going over to take it back and auction it. And I, I just it's just pretty simple and clear to me. I mean, I'm not trying to say who is more at blame in it. It's just, and I haven't mentioned any township's name. It's just ours. This will be the third payment we've made, and we cannot continue to do this. Commissioner Leitner. 
I understand Dave's frustration, and I, I, I am on the same page as far as what should have been in there to help us remedy the situation. But I just feel like <clears throat> we're already at a point where we've spent 700 and some odd thousand, and obtaining a legal opinion from an attorney is going to be an unjustified legal cost that we don't need to pursue. Um, it's not going to make a difference when it comes down to the the actual remedy for the situation because it's not up to the attorney. It's going to be up to the judge anyways, and it's already in the judicial system, and I think we should just continue to follow that and pressure the judiciary, not necessarily the attorney. So I, I just feel like it's an unjustified cost that we're um, – just trying to go after with a legal opinion, so I'm I'm not going to be supporting it. Any other commissioner comments? Commissioner Race. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to finish up, um, no matter how this vote goes, obviously uh, we'll all move forward like we always do. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, I truly respect about this commission. But uh, um, yeah, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Leitner. Um, we can get the if it ends up we get the legal opinion so be it uh, I don't see where that's going to play a role in this or a factor in this um, you know it's not like we're going to be you know we, we can get we can gather 25 percent of Leone's revenue but beyond that uh, it's not like we're gonna you know I just can't imagine that somebody's going to uh, well we can put the, we're gonna put the southern regional interceptor up for bid um, I just uh, I have a real problem with that uh, um, there hasn't been any entities that has any desire for it. I'm sure Jackson County has no desire for it. And the only one that's ever even mentioned it is Columbia, which uh, I think that would be a total disaster. So thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Commissioner Alexander. So Mr. Overton and um, Commissioner Alwell, I'm looking for clarification to make sure I'm understanding. Mr. Overton, you're stating that the attorney has advised us that that is not a feasible option. And Commissioner Alwell, you're just asking for that to be put in writing. If the chair is okay with dialogue back and forth, yes, I am looking for that in writing and not just restricted to the language that's in the bond contract, but all options that are open and viable to us. And my response is the same as previously stated and that is this came up before I spoke to the attorney on the phone said hey here's the situation can we can we they're not paying can we say hey we own it and his response is no you have a legal contract that you signed that says that, that outlines the remedies available to the county and one of the remedies is not take ownership it doesn't say that he says so you really can't do that beyond what the contract says now, we do not have that in writing, and basically what I would be doing is calling Tim and ask, or I'd probably just send him an email, uh, Tim, uh, and, uh, we're looking for, you know, and, and he would send it to us in writing. That's really what the what we're looking for. Any further questions from commissioners? Clerk has posted the vote. Please vote. Madam Clerk, mine disappeared from my screen. I may have bumped it. I want to vote yay on it if it Okay, thanks. Past five four. Commissioner Overton, thank you. <laughs> uh, next up, we have an update, a budget update by our finance director, Jim. Welcome. PowerPoint, the study. yeah, that one. Um, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, commissioners, uh, what I'd like to do today is just uh, kind of review broad scope, um, where the money comes from, what we spend the money on in general. Uh, also give you an update on how uh, 2015 uh, went. And also look at uh, our budget calendar uh, for uh, upcoming events. Um, we're always put in here in the presentation uh, the board's priorities, uh, uh, just so as, as a benchmark, uh, uh, so that you know how the categories fit into to the overall strategies that the board has established. Um, like to look at revenues, we can look at revenues by different kinds of categories. And uh, when I say by categories, I mean by the items you see on the monthly financial statements, uh, the general government, public safety, judicial, that type of thing. General government, one comment here is that um, the general government revenues are revenues that would not be restricted for any other purpose. In other words, it's a general fund dollars that the commissioners can appropriate uh, uh, based on what they decide. Uh, looking at the same pie, if you will, but sliced in a different manner, uh, we look at the revenues by type and we can see that uh, property taxes are 48% of our total budget. Intergovernmental of 16%. Intergovernmental would be mainly uh, state revenue sharing and some federal and state grant dollars that run through the general, uh, general fund and so forth. Uh, so again, this is two different ways to look at the revenues that are received by the general fund. Um, looking at the expenditures, if we look at it by category, and again, these are the categories you see on the, the subtotals on the monthly financial statements. Uh, and so forth and how the budget is adapted. We see that uh, public safety, that's jail and sheriff's operations, 30% of our total cost in a general fund. Judicial, that's the courts, prosecutor, uh, that's the 22% of the total budget and so forth. Uh, and then general government, that's everybody else, that's uh, 16%. Um, again, if we look at this by type of expense, our uh, the functional expenses that we have, personnel costs, that is salaries and fringes in the general fund, compose 58% of the total dollars we spend. Uh, then the rest are is, is supplies, contractual, and so forth. So in general, that's where the money goes. I think you, in the past you've seen total dollars that you spend, the 40-some million dollars we spend in the general fund, but I thought it would be well to kind of look at the total percents uh, to see put that in perspective. Jim? Yes. I'm backing up one quick second there. On those transfers out, 19%, so that would include the 700000 we send to LifeWays? There's always those yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, it's a 810 to LifeWays. Uh, also, other transfers that go to our internal service funds to fund uh, defined benefit, to fund uh, uh, retiree health health care, and so forth. Uh, to fund child care fund, for example. Um, this is a schedule that I think you've seen in the past, uh, and that's the net cost of county programs. And again, this is sorted by dollars, starting with small to large. Uh, this was updated using uh, 2016 information. That's 2016 budget information. In the past, it was based on 2015, and is a guide to kind of put things again in perspective as to where the money goes. And again, if I may chime in there, Jim. When you say net cost, you mean that that's so, for instance, I'm thinking of uh, the contracts we have for law enforcement with law enforcement townships. That's subtracting that out of this, correct? That's correct. The expense and revenue. Yep. Got it. Yep. And so it's net. Uh, and so forth. Uh, now, uh, taking a look at 2015, our budget said that we would use. $1.2 million of reserves uh, uh, for the year. Uh, um, after the audit has been complete, the actual results uh, say that we will use $1.2 uh, million of reserves. So we came out pretty close. We actually came out about 68000 to the good. In other words, we spent a little bit less than we anticipated. Uh, in, in, yes, sir. Commissioner Rice. Thanks, Jim. I'd just like to back up a second here. Uh, 
in regards to what the administrator said. Uh, when you when you show county sheriff and road patrol, does that include the sheriff and under sheriff salary? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, so if I average it out, we got uh, <coughs> excuse me. If I average it out, we got three million seven hundred thousand there. Okay. Um, minus their salaries, whatever that may be. Uh, you know, maybe throw the two together. Maybe we're down to three million four hundred thousand. Okay. Those those two people are mandated to be part of the sheriff department. Uh, the county jail is mandated to be part of the sheriff department. So when we start talking about the county, uh, the sheriff department being the quote unquote largest, uh, I think we need to take into consideration the sheriff, the under sheriff, and the county jail have to be there statutorily, and there's nothing we can do about it. So. In reality, we're looking at maybe three million four hundred thousand dollars when it comes to our actual patrol. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yes, that's correct. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, there's another schedule that was uh, sent to you here. I'll bring that up, uh, and this was uh, also done previously. Uh, yes. Question, Jim, on the uh, county sheriff and road patrol in jail. It's a statutory obligation we have, but. The degree that we have it is our choice, correct? Uh, yes. So even yeah. though it's mandated, yeah. the degree we decide it, at what it's mandated to, the number, is our choice. Yes, I believe you have to uh, see what is the term that you have to have. Minimal yeah. service level is the yeah. term that the Michigan Supreme Court has ruled the minimal service level. So those mandated services have to be funded, but they do not define minimal service level. It's not a place I ever want to have to go. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's uh, 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 what that means. Level. Yeah, what that means is debatable, and I think in other counties that's been challenged. In other words, uh, yeah. The Supreme Court made it very clear because there's been multiple challenges in the past, years and years ago, uh, that the county commissioners are in charge. When it comes right down to it, when it comes to budget. County commissioners are in charge. They decide what the budget will be. They decide what the minimal service level will be. Uh, again, it's not a place we would ever want to find ourselves, uh, minimal service level. But um, I suspect uh, the way local government funding is in Michigan, more and more communities will find themselves in that in the years to come. I'd like to follow up on the question that was asked prior if we're going to start talking about the salaries of, of elected officials or department heads under the net cost of county program slide, the one prior? Yes. Can we make the assumption then that under medical examiner, for instance, that that salary is included there? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. So how or why? Oh, all right. Thank you. Just just wanted to make sure we had that clarification. So we are comparing of like services and expenses. Yes. Uh, the other I brought up the other schedule which you have, um, and which takes the same data, in other words, the same dollars, but divvies it up based on uh, whether it's non-mandated internal service or whether it's uh, uh, other. Jim, yes. if I may, that's a that's a, a separate uh, uh, a file on your system, guys. You can pull up. Yeah, I could couldn't get that into the PowerPoint; it wouldn't fit in there. And also, in addition to that, is uh, uh, there's uh, I believe another another table that talks about each item and with a description of the functions. Uh, that that's also in the handout. So anyway, this is the same kind of puts it in perspective to say, you look at the mandated. Uh, and then look at everything else, and that's really what you have to work with uh, in terms of uh, uh, making changes. Oops, let's see. Oops. You, you've all seen this particular slide, so you know, uh, by all means, uh, have, <laughs> if you have questions, feel free to ask, but otherwise, Jim, continue your PowerPoint, please. Okay, okay um, then we started to uh, talk about the results for 2015, and again, we came out a little better than anticipated. 
uh, by uh, $69,000 in the general fund. Uh, if we also look at the fund balance available, uh, at the beginning of 2015, we started with $13 million in the general fund fund balance. Uh, 2015, we used $1.2 million. Our budget for 2016 says we will use $705,000. Our budget for 2017 says we'll use over a million dollars. That leaves uh, a balance, projected balance at the end of 2017 of uh, $10 million plus uh, in the G general fund. Jim? Yes. Mike, can, I, can we go back to the slide with the graph just for a second? Uh, and I'm looking at the emergency dispatch line. And if memory serves me right, it's about, what, 1.3 to operate that and the offset is the phone surcharges that we currently get. Yes. And with the public passing the surcharge, that should pretty much zero that out then, correct? Uh, That's 732000 It will for uh, 2017. For 2016, it does not because uh, we anticipate about seven hundred, seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars $775,000 of additional revenue. The numbers that are shown here would be, again, net of the budgeted amount of 775. Right. And, and that's just because we're halfway through the year when they passed it, right? Right. right. Thank you. Right. Uh, so anyway, at the end of 2017, projected fund balance of $10 million. Uh, that leaves us with 238000 above the commissioner uh, policy of maintaining 24 percent uh, in reserves, 24 percent of expenditures. And a good rule of thumb, I th and correct me, Jim, if you think I'm in error here. I believe it's around 400,000 per one percent. So if you're, you know, if you think, well, we can go to 22, that's like 400,000. That'll be 800,000 two percent. Yes. Uh, and also the. You know, the policy of 24% is, is a prudent uh, policy. Uh, the GFOA has said, well, it should be two months of operations, which is about 18% of reserves. However, if you get below, much below the 24% res uh, in reserves, then there, there starts to be a cash flow issue certain times of the year in the general fund. Because, again, if you recall, the how we receive our revenues uh, is skewed toward the uh, end of the year. So, yes, I'm sorry. Mike, isn't our policy actually a range of 18 to 24 yeah, percent? Okay. Yeah. And uh, the 238,000 um, left over here is consistent with what was communicated. It's uh, about $3,000 different than what Adam presented last time um, and so forth. So we're pretty much on track based on uh, the plans uh, that we've made. Uh, 2017, there is one change that um, was not incorporated in the budget at the time because we did not have the information, and that is the annual required contribution to the defined benefit pension plan. Now that we have the actual report, that was uh, $6 million. Uh, the previous year was uh, $5.9 million. Uh, so in the budget, we have to uh, put in an additional 140,000 in the budget. I planned on an increase of 150. However, the annual contribution, required contribution, went up by 290,000. So, um, at least it's not two million dollars like we uh, encountered uh, two, three years ago. Uh, I also included in the presentation, and again, there's a separate uh, file that's more readable that shows the budget calendar for the remaining uh, summer and fall. And the basic, uh, there's a couple of important dates. In other words, the adoption would be in September at the board meeting. Uh, public hearing, hearing previous to that, we would be presenting a draft budget in August and, and so forth. Backing up prior to that, June and July, we'll be spending times with department heads and so forth going over the numbers for 18. So the idea is, again, we have to, Revisit 17 to make any necessary changes that we know about now versus what we knew last year, and also uh, present a draft of 18. Any questions of Jim? As always, please feel free to get with the Administrator Controller's Office and with questions, and he will then share them with the rest of us if there are any. 
I do want to thank you, Jim, for your effort and work on this. I uh, had a conversation with the auditor, and 15's coming in very good and yeah. in a good shape, and I think uh, you should be commended for your due diligence. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Last item of business here. I, I would like to request the board that, that they give consideration to moving back the July meetings one week. Our study session is scheduled for July 5th, and I would like to move that to July 12th, which then in correspond, correspondingly moves the other meetings. Um, any objections to that? If not, I'll go ahead and make the posting. Uh, so everyone's aware of we're doing it. Terrific, thank you. you want to pick us up? Other, yeah, other item. Are there any items to come before the Board of Commissioners study session uh, to, the to the Administrator Controller's Office from Commissioners? Okay. Anything going on at the fairgrounds, sir? <coughs> Well, the 18th, there's a sheep showcase uh, that's a Saturday. It's put on by the Springport FFA, so we're welcoming them back to our fairgrounds, at least for that. So that's a, that's a positive. Um, other than that, tickets are on sale for all the shows. So even the dirt shows are on sale. We have the track, or, uh, monster trucks. We have a new rodeo, and we have, of course, the Jeff Dunham. We have a few tickets left for that. We have Five Finger Death Punch. Um, Still have some tickets for that. And we have Nelly and Vanilla Ice tickets. Plenty of those. So come out and, I guess, purchase those. <laughs> Any other commissioner comments? Commissioner Mahoney. Just wanted to invite everybody out to an event this Thursday at the Michigan Theater. It's called Wrap the Vote. It's a voter registration and education program uh, with some entertainment involved. So I would want to invite everybody out. I, I, I sent an email to everybody with the flyer attached. Okay, second opportunity for public comment. Any public comment? Peter Bormuth, um wanted to address a little bit what, what Michael said about the county's um, obligation to fund at certain minimal levels. Um, I believe the court, um, the Michigan Supreme Court, it was Wayne County versus Wayne County Sheriff, who at that time was William Lucas. And um, the court upheld the county commissioner's right to set funding levels. Um, and um, so you have the ability to cut the sheriff's department's budget. I just want you to know that. Any other public comment? Todd Britton with Leone Township. Um, I'm really not glad to see this happen, but now at least the county firsthand sees how Leone felt. We made the bond payments on that southern interceptor. Over $2 million were, were owed by those three townships, according to the contract. And now you guys are in the same position that we were put in. And I'm not glad to see that happen, but now you guys can kind of understand how we feel. We, we're not going to probably, unless a judge says we're going to get the money that we paid, we won't see the money that we've spent out. And now you guys are in that position. You, you did have an opportunity, and and it didn't happen, but we could have came up with a compromise and tried to get all the payments going forward. Um, and I guess if you did put this up to where Columbia, Hanover, and Liberty could buy the Southern Interceptor, they're not making payments now. They haven't made payments in the past other than a small portion. I I just don't where, understand where you would feel you're going to get paid going forward. And you're probably going to be in the same boat again. 
Um, so I, I just, I'm sorry Leone is doing this, but we're forced to. We don't, we ran out of money. We drained our, it was routine and non-routine maintenance that our residents have paid for over 30 some years that was built up and that's where the money that would have went towards the payments went and now it's depleted for replacement of our lines and things like that. And it, it, it's just frustrating and now you guys are feeling the frustration that we feel. So the sooner the judge makes a ruling, I think that'll remedy the situation with you and hopefully with us also. So thank you. Any other public comment? Public comments now close. Oh, I'm sorry, Regina. Regina from Nonprofit Network. Uh, I'm here on uh, the request of Commissioner Alexander to, uh, I guess, inform the uh, county commissioners that United Way and Nonprofit Network did a series of community conversations, focus groups with those who live in poverty. And uh, their issues are extreme in the areas of housing, transportation, and child care. And it's uh, preventing employment and uh, creating barriers to employment. And so I um, didn't know if you wanted anything more. It was a brief conversation about coming here, but uh, the, uh, the conversations are public documents, um, and I hope you've shared them. Thank you. Any other, any other public comment? Seeing or hearing none, I uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Do a motion to support. All in favor? Opposed? Duly carried.